Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and this week I have been in uh, Pennsylvania at the Perennial Plant Association's annual symposium and today I'm at the first tour stop which is Stone Lee Gardens. It's a garden I have always wanted to visit but never have. So I'm really excited to take you on this adventure. Um, I don't know all the plants. This is a beauty tour um, and I hope you'll just be inspired to put this on your must visit list. So let's go for a garden tour. I'm Taylor Pilker, co-owner and vice president of Cabinet's Perennials. We're a wholesale nursery in Kingsville, Maryland. And here at Stoneley, I'm pretty excited because when they first installed some of the parking area, we did a contract grow and we delivered and grew these plants, many of them from seed, which is a passion of mine. So it's really exciting to see an established planting that you were actually part of. Because we do have this affinity with uh, native plants. We're not a complete native plant nursery, but it was a passion for my myself and my business partner, Ferenc Kiss. And so much of what we're gonna see today is this naturalistic approach using native plants to fill up big swaths of space. What I'm really excited about here is, of course, the woody layer, the, the tree and shrub collection here is not only incredibly diverse, but also really old. Um, all right, let's keep meandering. What I was stating is I love that you have a indigenous meadow concept going on with a number of asters and grasses, but then you have an older part of the garden that you can see the transformation occurring where they're introducing native species into the mix of some older established plants that have been here. And I believe the goal is to develop a, a, a native landscape at this garden. And it's really cool to see it in the process to learn how maybe we can do some of these things in every type of garden we have. So what you're looking at here is, you know, an Asian magnolia with an understory of Asian pachysandra, both of which have a place in the landscape, but perhaps maybe not to the amount of square footage that, you know, Pachysandra can take up. So at the time this garden was built, Asian plants were the only thing. But it's really cool to be living in this era where we have a greater understanding of the role that indigenous plants play in improving the environment and of course making you have a better sense of place so yeah everything here i'm envious of i would like to have a a feature like this maybe a little bit deeper so you could actually sit in it of course <laughs> cool off on a hot day I'll work on it. <laughs> yeah i really like the planting in the center the rocky slope, and then the water, the sound of this infinity edge drop is really, really, it's just beautiful. And I also would like to have a pavilion like that. <laughs> Put it on my wish list. Of course, this looks like Phlox Gina. distinguished by much smaller flowers. It is a pollinator magnet, but unfortunately has not done well for me in Central North Carolina. Yes, I am gleaning a lot of inspiration for the next door property, because the goal is to use this native plant palette. Okay, so most people are familiar with Asian thuyas or arborvitaes. Um, this is Thuya occidentalis, but a really old specimen. And you see its habit is to have low branches that kind of sprawl out. And give you this incredible kind of shade space. Look at this. It's so remarkable. <laughs>
entire garden is really remarkable. It's hard doing a garden tour with hundreds of people. Um, but I just wanted to showcase a couple of really extraordinary trees right here in kind of this grassy open space that's house adjacent. You see really great juniperus, columnar junipers provide a lot of uh, architectural interest. Huge sycamores flanking the front corner and back corner. Obviously this sycamore is much healthier. You can see that one is in decline. And then look at that ginkgo. Look at this giant weeping Cercidophyllum. Terrible light, but impressive tree. It's pretty. So I'm really intrigued with all the Cercidophyllum that they have here. Little nerd information, Cercis, like red bud. Cercid means heart shape. Phylum means leaf. So it's a botanical name, the genera means heart-shaped leaf, Cercidophyllum. That's an easy way to remember it. And these get really beautiful, like butter yellow fall color. And when the leaves fall to the ground, they smell like cotton candy or caramel. It's the most extraordinary smell that almost no one can ever identify. And it's from this absolutely incredible shade tree, Cercidophyllum japonicum. Jared from Nacogdoches, thrilled to be here at PPA. He's at SFA University, and how do I know you? Uh, you and I go way back because we met before social media. <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, we met on the Garden Writers Conference 2009. and When he was in friend. Raleigh at yeah. NC State for yeah, his grad school. Grad school. Yeah. I'm so happy to see you, Jared. I'm so happy to see you too, Brittany. I hope you've enjoyed our tour here at Stone Lee Gardens in Pennsylvania. We're actually like across the street from Villanova University. And it was my first visit. And it's my first visit. And we would both come back 100%. So of the many gardens to visit in the Philadelphia area, Stone Lee is definitely one that you shouldn't miss. Well, thanks so much for watching everybody.